Hello and welcome back. Uh, it's been quite a while now since I've done one of these videos, so let me just catch you up on what we're doing. Um, right here I have this expansion card kind of thing coming off here. And I'll get into the details of what all this stuff means right now. I just want to show a quick little demo and then we'll talk over the fun stuff. So um, I moved all the boards over to another breadboard and uh, we'll talk about that. But So I have this expansion card plugged in, got the 6502 with the NES PPU plugged in. We go over to the cable and up to the TV and we just see standard Mario, right? Alright, so good. So we just have this thing going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the camera down so I can use two hands. And I'm just going to pop off the expansion card like you would if you were pulling out a, a game card or something from a system. So now this thing is disconnected. And then I'm going to just quickly go ahead and reach over and hit power cycle the system. And just run it just a couple times. There we go. So we now have this thing disconnected and we go up here to the cable and we see a different uh, program running. This one is actually just a RAM test program that I've written. Um, you can see that we have page RAM and just a little P for pass so I was able to go out and um, test all my RAM and stuff like that. So Now let's just take a brief moment and talk about what's going on we have this little parallel cable that has all this kind of looks like tin foil on there it's actually foil tape that you can get at like Home Depot or something and then we come over here to our um, kind of the XGS expansion card that I've soldered lots of wires onto into this separate breadboard that I can just push in and pop out of um, so now why do we have this foil tape on here well because when we have this parallel cable running we are actually sending over signals over this, you know, over 10 megahertz or so, and what happens is this kind of becomes an antenna of some sort. So I wanted to shield all the signals and all the changes going from the rest of the circuit with this foil tape. Some other things of note is, let's see if we can see here, I have a couple of resistors here in series, um, and those are called dampening resistors. So we're going to use those to kind of dampen out those reflections that are coming because when you're sending those high signals, high frequency signals going over, uh, you'll have these kind of ripple effect going on and you want to be able to dampen those things out. And that's what we have these series resistors for. Alright, so let's talk about the rest of the circuit, what we have going on here. Again, this has changed from the last video that I've done. Um, underneath this parallel cable, if I can get it up, I'll just grab this, pop out the ground. So underneath here I have now replace all my glue logic which was just a programmable logic device a PLD with a CPLD so this is a complex programmable logic device uh, we can do lots more fun things with it um, you can write in Able code or you can write in Verilog and fun stuff uh, what else we got here we got uh, 128k RAM in there um, going to the 6502 processor and you might think to yourself, well, how is the 6502 able to access the whole 128K? Because the 6502 actually only has a 64K addressing space. So we do it through paging registers. Um, essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a special chunk of memory, um, say from 8K to 10K, and we're going to split up that, and we're going to be able to kind of access those 8K into 10K and virtually we'll be accessing addresses that are higher up into the 120s and, and so forth. So we're able to page in and out extra RAM so that way we can virtually have more RAM than the 6502 can access. Now down here, up here I have my EEPROM like normal. Down here I have uh, another 32K SRAM so I was able to actually add more memory so we have um, 128K plus this 32 RAM down here and, and it's the same concept and it's basically transparent to the person who's going to be programming it. They're just going to write to the page register a uh, higher value and it's going to go out and grab this SRAM instead of the other SRAM up there. Um, basically this is the same circuit that I had before the NES PPU just for jumpering it over here onto this board. And that's about it for these changes so until the next video see you later.